Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Steve Forbes, who is the chairman and editor-in-chief of Forbes Media. Steve, we are here at the Global CEO Conference in Singapore, um, 21st meeting. I think you've been to almost all of them. All except all, one. All except one. And then you, you know, came in virtually. Give me some sense of the impressions, the takeaways. There were some government uh, ministers here. You know, certainly it's a lot of talk about, you know, politics, AI. What struck you? Uh, the perception that the world has changed, is changing. Uh, no one was trying to say we can turn back the clock to 2019, which after crisis in the past, people sort of hint uh, we can bring it all back together again. Mm -hmm. What came through here is nobody believes you can bring it back together again. The question is, how do we go forward? Uh, whether it's dealing with local scandals Singapore is doing, uh, dealing with the money laundering, or whether it's uh, the... It, uh, the uh, finance minister from Indonesia mm -hmm. talking about where that country can go and the opportunities there and how they move ahead. Critical country. It all came through and in terms of AI, a uh, very interesting panel there where some think, oh, yeah, they will take over. They will be able to write software. And, uh, the, that was a the very monsters. optimistic conversation, I think. But, uh, but, uh, but then, too, uh, what came through there was this is going to be great for fighting disease. It's a tool, not, not an oppressor. So I think uh, people found it a stimulating environment. And one of the things about these conferences is what takes place off the stage, not just on the stage, talking to each other, brainstorming. That's how ideas come about. What's well, interesting, we call it the Global CEO Conference, but give me a sense of the demographics. When I look in this room, it's very much billionaires. Many of them have incredible um, you know, conglomerates in their countries, and they bring this next generation as well of leadership. Give, me a give us a sense, because I think global CEO in the U.S., people would think, um, you know, CEOs of corporations. This is a very different feel. Well, these are people who uh, are true entrepreneurs. They mm -hmm. did not climb the corporate ranks. They created an effective mm -hmm. corporate rank. And uh, some of them had setbacks. We had an interview with the head of CP. And the, what he, the travails he went through is very interesting back in 1997. And so these are people who, yes, have achieved success, but also face crises where they are nearly destroyed. How do you come back from that? How do you rebuild from that? And so I think uh, this was a very realistic thing. Uh, there was no sense that people were anointed. All of them earned their way there and therefore had something interesting to say. They had been creating and then trying to build and then try to adjust to a fast changing environment. When, when you think about where um, these people are seeing growth, what struck you as interesting? Because I'm sure that's shifted a lot over the years. Uh, well, well, that's uh, obviously a technology, but also what came through with the CP, uh, that great company, mm -hmm. and in, is that you can take the oldest thing around, food, <laughs> chickens, <laughs> what's older than that, in terms of uh, taking a, a traditional business and using technology to grow that business and expand it and go into other areas. So I think one of the things about technology is we think, oh, that's great new stuff, but it's also a tool for seemingly traditional businesses and recasting them in a new way to meet uh, people's needs. How important is the U.S. as a market when you were talking to people and people are asking you about it? Um, because I don't think there, the bridges have been as strong as, you know, since pre-COVID. Well, I think uh, the, the perception is there are markets uh, everywhere. And uh, talking about CP again, uh, they want to invest in the United States. They see a buoyant market there in the future. Yeah, we, we're, we're at home and all oh, things aren't doing so well. But to an outsider, this still looks like a very vibrant market, growing market, growing population, and uh, a country that does not see itself as in the past. And in terms of uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, in terms of changing supply chains. So it's not going to be what we had of old, but uh, people are figuring out how to adjust and how countries can adjust in terms of uh, making it happen. A lot of countries have had barriers in the past to uh, making it easy to invest. Yeah. Well, maybe that uh, should change in terms of personnel that are allowed in, barriers, and make it, make, make it easy, and good things can happen. I was fascinated by the CEO of... Um you know, VinFast, the electric vehicle maker, mm -hmm. that's, which is now building a plant in the U.S. So I think just sort of seeing some of these different pockets of growth that you always think of as low-cost markets, where you actually are now seeing highly skilled talent emerge. One thing that did not, maybe it did come up, you tell me, China. Obviously, it's, a, it's sort of in some ways 
unspoken but yet spoken. Tell me about how you think people are feeling about China in this part of the world, because we talk about it a lot in the U.S. Uh, a lot of uncertainty. Where are they going? Why are they doing what they're doing? Uh, why did uh, Xi Jinping skip the, uh, the, the G20 conference mm -hmm. and send as a premier a slap in the face to the Prime Minister of India? Well, we all know India and China have had uh, border clashes, but why wouldn't you go there and show the flag and show that you're the dominant power instead of sending an underling there? So uh, it's the uncertainty, and because of that uncertainty, they want assurances the U.S. is not going to go into isolation. They want to know the, the, if you have to, there are other parts of the world where there are great growth opportunities, including the United States, mm -hmm. not just uh, developing countries or rising countries like India. Um, anything else in terms of when you look back to, obviously, it, it started right after 9-11, when it was an incredibly uncertain time. Now we're in another uncertain time. Anything else strike you just about how the demographics have changed over the years, or this year in particular, who was in the room and who wasn't? There are a lot of uh, young people, and I think uh, that uh, also speaks well for the future. Uh, when you get older, you tend to think, oh, the new generation. Oh, well, new generations include many, many people, and mm -hmm. you saw it here in terms of, uh, of people who uh, are at a fairly young age. And also uh, people who are well advanced in years. Uh, the great Yankee ball player Yogi Berra said, "It ain't over till it's over," and I think you saw that here. The thing that they, I think, the united the uniting uh, feeling is a uh, dynamism. Mm -hmm. uh, these people are not passive. These people are working. How do you solve problems and create opportunities? Right. So in that sense, it's uh, that kind of energy is energizing. Yep. They're 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 not uh, passive. They're not uh, looking in their cups and oh boy. All right, how do we get better cups? <laughs> exactly. Good. Well, I look forward to next year. So uh, we all are. <laughs> Thank Especially you. as I get older, I'm looking forward <laughs> to these. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thank you.